What's going on, it's the Ramp Nerd, and I just got back from seeing the latest installment to the Children of the Corn franchise, simply titled The Children of the Corn. Now, this is being labeled as a remake, but it really shouldn't because it seems more like a prequel to the original. So, if you've seen the original movie, it takes place in this town called Gatlin, which is in Indiana. These kids have overrun this town, and when I say overrun, they've killed all the adults, and now they run this whole little small town all for the name of an entity known as He Who Walks Amongst the Rose. You know that movie. So this, to me, acts like a prequel to that film, right? Now, I'm going to start by saying this movie's not good. <laughs> as you could probably guess, I mean, you can watch the trailer and already tell what kind of film you're getting. But, as I've said with a few other movies this year, it's a B-movie. And if you're used to watching B-movies, this is not going to be anything different than what you've seen. Like, this is one of those films that you may have caught on sci-fi wearing his blockbuster shirt on purpose because this is a movie you may have seen in the back of the the, the store in the unknown section you know this is what this is you know if you go in here with high expectations then you're going to be let down grossly like because it's not good i'm just going to say that off rip and i'm not trying to get this film a pass but i just know what kind of movie this is like i spent many days in my youth watching films like this, watching sci-fi, watching movies with my dad, my uncle, these movies that you know they're so bad, but you can find some entertainment out of them. And if you're like a real horror fan who's a horror head, I would say, you understand these kind of films and where they sit. You're not looking at them to take them seriously. You're not looking at them for the best film possible. And it just is what it is. And it's honestly amazing how many B movies we've gotten this year. I mean, first it was Fear, then it was Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and now here we are with Children of the Corn. Now, like I said, it's not that good of a movie because you, know, you have over-the-top acting and some people overact and think a few, there's a few actors who overact in it where it's like, you don't need to go this hard. It doesn't match the quality of the film. But I can see where they were going with it. You know, trying to show an origin story, trying to make a new big bad with this little girl named Eden. There are some pretty... <laughs> This, 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 there's some pretty gnarly kills in here. Um, and I think really where this movie goes wrong is the budget because they, they fall into the pit of trying to use CGI when you don't really have to. I think had they just done a practical costume for the third act, it would have been a lot better, you know. I think the first movie did the same thing with the sorts of visual effects, but it was back in 84, so we kind of give it a pass back then. You know, there's only so much you can do. But this one, in this day and age, we know what it is. Like, you, you, you can easily just make a costume and it would have just done so much better than what they did here. Now, I'm trying to figure out how I can describe the story. It's, it's the same as, as all of these movies, and that's another one of my points. If you have seen any film that any franchise of Children of the Corn besides the first one, this falls in line right with the other ones, man. I don't know how many people have seen all of the movies. I actually own them all. And again, these are movies that are guilty pleasures. I don't think any of them are really good besides the first one. The first one is one of my favorites, period. And I love that film. But everything after does not equal up to the first one. And it's no surprise here. Honestly, this film is better than some that are in the franchise, to be frank. Um, from a technical standpoint, but you know what? Can I say that? Let me think. Because I actually like a lot of movies in that franchise. They all had this like 90s vibe going on because they had 84, which is the first one. I think the second one didn't come out until maybe 1990. And then from that point on, from that one to the late 90s, I think that was six when it took place on Halloween. All of those are pretty good, but the ones after that are just trash. The ones, the ones that are like after the, the 90s, mm -mm, not good. But this one, if you've ever seen the remake that was on Sci-Fi, this one is a lot like that one. So if you like that one or you can stomach that one, it's the same thing here. Same story. It's about kids taking over and man, the lead characters have to stop it. It's not nothing you have to go out your way to see. If you at, if you're wondering if you should see it in theaters. No, I don't think you do. You can easily just wait till it hits Shutter because it's gonna be on Shutter, I believe, on the 31st. <sighs> Later in March, at the end of March, it's gonna be on Shutter, and you can easily just wait. I really went to go see it because I have an AMC Stubbs list, which means I didn't pay for it. It's just part of my subscription. But 
it is you get what you get you know you get what you expect like, again i'm gonna double down on the fact that if you are into b movies and you understand their purpose you can have some enjoyment out of this film i enjoy myself in no way shape or form when i say it's a great movie or put it up to movies that are way better than released this year but it was a fun little time you know i you're talking about a guy here who enjoys movies like the bye bye man and truth or dare uh countdown it's they're, they're not great by any standpoint but it's one of those films you can literally just cut your brain off and this children of the corn is exactly that give me a few kills um a little bit more into the lore of Children of the Corn, and I actually did like the design of the entity. Like, I thought that that was cool what they did in the third act. I just wish it would have been a, a, a real suit because that would have been fire. Because throughout these movies, a few of them go this route, but not all of them. And there are Easter eggs sprinkled all throughout the film that kind of hint at different versions of different versions different sequels in the franchise i was hoping we were going to see isaac at least or like somebody who was good, supposed to be isaac that would have been a, a, a cool um a cool little easter egg or somebody who was even playing who was supposed to be malik or something like that malachi excuse me not malik no Ma malik is somebody else but playing malachi that would have been a nice cool easter egg but all in all it's literally a popcorn turn your brain off horror film that doesn't provide much scares and if you are a fan of the franchise, I don't see how you could watch this one and just think it's the worst thing ever. But if you don't like Children of the Corn, period, you ain't gonna like this. If you don't watch B-horror movies, you ain't gonna like this. When I say B-horror movies, I'm talking about the joints that be better quality B-horror. Like, I can't watch the shit that production value is just terrible. It's film quality, but just low quality at the same time. It's hard to explain. Might do a channel just breaking down what a B-horror movie is for folks who don't know what that means. But um, it's a good beer hole. It's, it's it's a better quality B horror movie that it's not good, but I found some enjoyment about it. So, if you've seen this film. What do you think? Leave me a comment below. Um, what's your favorite movie in the franchise? If you've seen all of them, and it better be number one because that one's classic. And if you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Rap nerd productions, no capping. That's word to mommy.